Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. We've got Nate with us as well as Philly. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit about Romelu Lukaku being anonymous. Uh, it was pretty much his first uh, test, I suppose. Um, because they haven't really, they haven't really been up against, you know, anyone that would really make you go, oh, you know. And Lukaku has been scoring in all these no. games, and it was the same with Everton last year. He was scoring against all these teams. And then when he got put up against someone, uh, the likes of Liverpool or anyone or in around the top six, top seven, uh, it was the same. It was the same thing that kept on happening is that he would struggle against the bigger teams and he would, he would go anonymous. Yeah. He'd be walking around the field with his arms out and everything like that. And it's just the same. But they, but basically, the story of the game was Liverpool huffed and puffed but they couldn't blow United's bus down. Um, Lukaku... Like you see, in the whole game, it was just Liverpool trying all these beautiful little triangle pass, and it was great to watch. And when they got to round the box, I, I've never seen Liverpool under Klopp be as yeah. nice as they were. Mm. And they're renowned for their goal scoring, they're renowned for their blitz and attacking football. Salah especially was completely wasteful. Obviously, Lukaku ended up on the milk carton, but there wasn't a single United player that really did much. Um the less kind of said about United's performance, the better. No, it was but complete negative. De Gea, De Gea was unbelievable. Yeah, as, as, as usual, he's always an 8 or a 9 out of 10, either he's, way. He's uh, fantastic. Uh, but uh, my point about uh, Lukaku is that all these United fans were coming out saying, oh, he's, he's the best striker in the Premier League, and who's better than him at the moment? And he's been scoring tap-ins against not very good oppositions. Like... And Everton were piss poor as well when he played against them, but nah. a lot of his a lot of his goals have been against piss poor opposition. And you know he he's not the best striker in the world because yeah. or in the Premier League, sorry, he's he's not because the best striker in the Premier League would be able to put it up to these teams, and he gets bullied against bigger or uh, bigger teams. He gets bullied by their defenders. He wouldn't think yeah. of the size of him, but he gets bullied. Lovren and uh, Matip with that game. Go on. Yeah. No, I was going to say, with that game on, on lunchtime, you may as well have put the game from last season on because it was exactly the same. Liverpool playing yeah. all this pretty football, this, that and the other. Manchester United just happily sitting there going, yep, yeah, just keep throwing, flinging balls at us. We'll just sit back and let you do nothing with it. You know, and for all the hype that Sky and all these other companies put on these games, it's like, prove to us that it's the best product for the biggest game of the season because everyone knows that's the biggest game in the calendar. There's no bigger game there Granted, yes, there are local derbies like the Merseyside derby, North London derby, etc., etc. But everyone is talking about Liverpool, Man United every season, no question. But uh, maybe historically, but not so much anymore. You know, you know we, we heard yeah, about true. it so much in the week building up to it. How about you know? Oh, this is a classic, and it's the bastion of English football. Is that the bastion of English football? Jesus, not right. at all. The, the Milan derby, the Milan derby yesterday was more exciting. Italian yeah, football and football they called, they called Serie A negative football. Yeah, I agree with that. And one player actually who impressed me was uh, Gomez. I thought he was very good. I thought his uh, final ball was good into the box. Yeah, Joe Gomez yeah, was, really played well. Yeah. And it, it, it just kind of seemed like Liverpool were missing something up top. Uh, Mane obviously being out is a big is a big loss for them. Um, but Coutinho as well. It, it was kind of like it was kind of like watching Arsenal of about six years ago. And they were trying to just walk it into the goal every time, where they could, they could, they wouldn't put it into the box. But yeah, just but Phil, I mean, Liverpool losing Mane shouldn't stunt them in terms of their going forward because they brought in Salah to cope with losing Mane. Because obviously yeah. last season they didn't have Salah because when Mane got injured at Afcon, of course that would stunt any team who relies on players of Mane's capability. But even still, you've got Firmino, Coutinho, Salah, you've got even young Ben Woodburn. They have players in those positions that can cope without Mane. So the idea that, oh, they didn't have Mane, that's not good enough. That's like me turning around and saying, oh, we didn't have uh, Scott Dan, Sacco, Zaha, Benteke. You have to cope without players if you lose them to injury or suspension. That's part of the game. And Manchester United obviously have lost, um, is it Pogba to injury? Yeah, yeah Pogba um, was missing. Pogba, Fellaini, but again, you know, they've got players in, like, they've got Herrera, Fellaini. I know he's injured, but they've got players in that midfield that can cope when they lose players in that position. Again, they've got players that can cope if they lose, for example, Marcus Rojo, 
etc etc obviously David De Gea is the one part of the pitch they can't afford for him to get injured because they don't have a keeper to his level yeah so the idea Romero's not a bad oh, little replacement Mane. Romero's not bad no, no, for no, a no, game no. or two not at all I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I'm not, I'm not saying Romero's not you know a good keeper I'm just saying they don't have a David De Gea ident- ad- identical player to him in the yeah, game, yeah, in, exactly. as goalkeeper yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's. I mean, for example, it's a bit like Arsenal losing Alexis Sanchez. You know, Theo Walcott cannot do the work Sanchez does. As much as Arsenal fans want Walcott to actually pull his finger out his backside, he's not going to do it. Started. Yeah. So, but th- that's what I'm trying to say. You know, Liverpool fans are quick to say, you know, oh, we didn't have Mane. Okay, you've still got Coutinho, Firmino, very good players going forward. There's no excuses for not having one key player out. If you've got sure, six key sure. players out, then I'd understand. And this is the biggest game of the calendar. And both, but Liverpool yeah. should have won it. Let's, you know, before I, before I verbally destroy Liverpool, they were the better team, 100%. Man United just came for the point and were quite happy to shut Liverpool down. Typical Mourinho performance. He's no interest in winning, but he's no interest in losing. He just wants to keep Liverpool very quiet, and he did that. Go ahead, there, Paul. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, do, do you see, like. I think that for Klopp there, that was one win in nine games. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Is that but correct? Again, you know, when we when we look back to the games, when they play at Old Trafford, it's much more open because the pitch is wider. At Anfield, it's a much more narrow pitch. So Liverpool can't press the way they usually do because wider pitches suit Liverpool more than narrow pitches. So, um, but again, you know, it goes back to what I said, you know, that game on Saturday should have been arguably the blockbuster game of the weekend. You know, obviously Manchester City smashing Stoke 7-2 or something ridiculous to stole the headlines because Stoke just completely fell apart because City are just ridiculous going forward. But all the hype surrounding that game took away from the spectacle of it, I think. And that's what people often don't understand is that when you build a game up so much, it obviously does let you down. But if you just go, listen... If the two teams play today, who wins? You say, right, Liverpool, Man United, whatever. But there was so much building onto it. It's like, we know how good these teams are. Man United haven't come up against anyone at the minute that is at their level. They haven't played Chelsea, Man City, Man- uh, uh, Tottenham, Liverpool, Arsenal or Everton. They haven't played a team that they will be looking... They played Everton. They beat, they beat Everton for nil. They've just played they all the teams. Yeah. They beat Everton 4-0. Okay, fair enough. I mean, they, but they bad Palace 4-0. But that's what I'm trying to say. They haven't played anyone that can actually give them a bit of a game. Yeah. They played teams of confidence, it was no a for me. and can't match them player for player. Yeah, but that's what you I've know. been saying. That I've been saying. And, I've um, been saying that for a couple of months it, now. That they haven't come across anyone. Everyone's big enough, Lukaku, to be the next best thing. And you know, again, I, I I've been saying it for weeks now, weeks and months. Oh yeah, but that well, he, he, well, he, this he, is the thing. United fans said this to us about Yanazai. You remember when Yanazai first broke out at Man United? He was meant to be the next big thing from their academy and what have you. Where is he now? Real Sociedad. Mm. You know, the people were telling me that Yanazai is better than wingers, in, uh, better than Ashley Young, better than Zaha, better than um, Sterling. I'm thinking, if he proves himself, fair enough, you can't argue with that. Lukaku hasn't come up against, by obviously Saturday, any defenders that will be able to handle him. Because smaller team defences are probably scared of Lukaku and Manchester United because they know if they make a mistake, they're going to get punished. But bigger defences can cope with that. So it's just, for me, I felt it was a bit of a cop-out the way the game played because Liverpool, for all their attacking and all their menacingly attacking threat, they just couldn't find a way past a very, very solid and resolute Man United. And that is something that people have to realise that Mourinho in big games is quite happy to take a draw. It's the smaller games he wants to win because then people get to think, OK, do you know what? United are a threat. But we'll see how they fare against Chelsea and Man City. And I'm looking forward to the Manchester derby this season because that would be interesting. Because obviously, if Lukaku turns up in that game, you think, OK, fair enough, he's turned up. But City on the, uh, right now, my word, they're so red hot, it's not even funny. Yeah, 